Okay, so today is going to be part three in a video series that you guys seem to like a lot, and that is about estrogenics. Estrogenics are a family of chemicals that are involved in the world around us that affect our hormonal health so much, that affect our testosterone so much that it changes the shape of our family jaws, if you get my meaning, our sausage and eggs, whatever you want to call them, right? It changes the shape and health of our sperm so much that we can no longer have babies healthily, right? It's that bad. Have I got your attention yet? Now that I've got it, here's a primary resource that I'm going to use on the screen behind you guys. It's a book called Estro Generation by Anthony G.J. PhD, real doctor, and he is the president of the International Medical Research Collaborative. So real credentials to back up who this guy is. In video one, part one, we went through food packaging, mainly talking about plastics and all kinds of little details that you might want to watch as well. Things like tin cans, coffee cups, BPA, what's the deal with that? Like what alternatives can we use? I went through like my whole entire like list of like my my experience, like years and years of what I do right now to kind of stay away from plastic in packaging especially, right? And in all the other parts as well. Video number two, part number two, the food itself. What foods are estrogenic? What foods will destroy our testosterone? What foods will make us like give us man boobs and really mess up our health in that kind of hormonal way? That is something to focus on as well. So video number three, this is going to be more about stuff to do with our the condition of our family jewels. We're talking about down there, right? We're talking about our balls, the, the temperature, the materials that we kind of put in our clothing that we wear. So furniture as well, the materials that surround us, like in the in our flooring, our tables and chairs, our sofas that we sit on. What can we do about that? And how does that affect our home and our health, right? Clothing, materials and clothing, ingredients and toiletries, right? I might talk about that one in a part four if I can't fit it in, but if it fits in, it fits in, you'll see, okay? So, this is video number three, okay? Let's get started. Now that I've gotten rid of all the information, the details, this video is going to be a bit more chatty because I've got some notes on the screen behind you guys. I'm going to refer to that. I'm just going to tell you my story, what I do, what alternatives there are to the problems that we have in our lives when it comes to this kind of thing. So topic number one is not really an estrogenic topic, but it is a hormonal topic, right? A An environmental factor that can affect our hormonal health. And that is what the, the topic of estrogenics is mainly about, right? Estrogenics are mainly about talking about chemicals that affect our hormonal health. This is going to be like environmental stuff that isn't necessarily chemical related, okay? The first topic, hot balls equals a very bad thing, okay? Keeping your balls warmer than they need to be is not good for your hormonal health, right? Especially for the quality of your sperm, that matters a lot. So what can we do about it knowing this fact, right? Hot baths, hot showers, and the sauna probably things to avoid in the future, right? Particularly hot baths. If you're gonna have a hot bath, don't stay in there for too long. Hot showers, if you're gonna have a hot shower, don't stay in there for too long. Showers are less of a problem because you're less immersed in the water and so your body parts have room to breathe. And the sauna, something that I do quite a lot. And here's an alternative that I use to still go to the sauna and still be able to use the sauna just like that, right? I take in a cold pack into the sauna. In fact, let me just show you what I use. So this is a cold pack. It inflates to a bigger size. Don't worry, it's not actually this small. And I fill it with cold water and I, I literally, I place it on my crotch while I'm in the sauna, right? It might be embarrassing. It might sound like, like, oh, what's that guy doing? Is he crazy? What's, what is that about, right? And I often get questions and I, I have to explain myself, right? But this is an alternative. If you still want to use the sauna, use a cold pack on your testicles and you should be fine. Brief hot shower is fine, as I said, right? Sitting in a hot bath or a hot tub is a no-no, right? So like just sitting there and just spending like half an hour in a hot tub, very bad. Nukes your testicles and your testicle health, right? No-no. Heated car seats, not one you thought about, right? A lot of this information, by the way, I got from a an Andrew Huberman podcast. So very, very established neuroscientist, very researched in the stuff that he, he says in his podcast. So highly recommend you go check that out if you have the time to get into a more detailed version of what I'm talking about today. Even just sitting down itself, right? Spending time sitting down, the the warmth from your legs and your thighs warm your testicles and that's not so great for your t- testicular health. They've done research on this stuff, right? It's, it's crazy. Just sitting down, 
Like I, I even have a standing desk. I do my work while standing. And so like before I even discovered this fact, so I'm like, okay, at least I'm safe from that, right? I don't spend too much time sitting down. If you have larger legs, right? Either from excessive fat or like a lot of muscle, that can also affect the temperature of your testicles as well, especially when you're sitting down, I presume, right? That's not an excuse to skip leg day. It's not like you can have incredibly muscular legs and that will affect your testicles. I'm presuming that the, all the rest of these kind of mitigate each other as well. So like if you, you know, if you spend time sitting down with bigger legs, that's probably worse, right? So maybe spend more time standing up if you've got bigger legs. Phone heat and phone EMFs, right? Keeping your phone in your front pocket has even been shown to decrease the quality of your sperm and affect the health of your testicles. I'm realizing now that I'm gonna to have to say the word testicles a lot in this video, so please bear with me while I do that. So the heat from your phone, although your phone doesn't feel like it's hot or warm, it has a temperature to it because it has electrical components in there that need to run. And so that heats up the phone and it affects the temperature of your testicles and it affects your testicle health in a negative way. And science has shown that the EMFs, so the radio waves, the Wi-Fi signal, the Bluetooth, that stuff, has a negative effect on healthy human flesh, flesh, like tissue, right? They've studied it and they've, they've researched this effect, right? So having it very close to your body probably is not a good idea, particularly close to your testicles as well. So the EMFs, I've got written on a note, it's no debate, it has been confirmed to be a negative effect on biological tissue. That's, those are the exact wordings of it, right? So keep your phone away from your testicles and your body, right? Never in the front pocket back pocket or jacket pocket or even the backpack is even better airplane mode is good but switched off is the best right even in airplane mode your phone still has some kind of signal ability but switched off is the best right another one that i kind of i, I already do but this is something that i i saw in the research and recommendations speakerphone right keeping the phone to your ear or having it on speakerphone so it's away from your face speakerphone is a lot better I tend to like having things on speakerphone in general. I don't like to have to hold something to my face anyway. So that's just a, another benefit that I derive from stuff that I already do. So speakerphone is a lot better than keeping your phone to your face. Tip there. Now, furniture. Next topic. Here, the basic tip is to avoid plastic. And that is harder than it sounds because a lot of the stuff around us today involves plastic. Stuff that you wouldn't even think involves plastic. So stick to natural materials, right? in your clothing, your bed and bedding. So examples of synthetic materials that are made from plastic, right, are polyester. Polyester is a plastic that's woven into a fiber and used to make clothes, right? A lot of like sports tops and things like this. I wish I had, I wish I had an example to show you, but like I've gotten rid of most of my polyester clothing because of this very fact, because of the very fact that it affects your hormones and your body and your health in that way. I don't have an example to show you, I'm sorry. So with that, stick to natural materials. Like everything you see me wear in videos is natural materials, right? This is a wool jumper, fully wool. This is a cotton t-shirt. I'm wearing cotton trousers and even cotton socks, which are hard to find by the way, but you can find them. I found a link on Amazon. I find, if I can find the time, I can link it below or like put a screenshot here. If, if that still exists, right? I got those years ago, so I don't know if this still exists. So look into finding natural materials for your bed and bedding, right? That could be, a little bit more expensive perhaps than you know just finding clothes like a lot of these clothes i got from charity shops which are like these cheaper shops where they sell second-hand clothing we call them charity shops in the, U in the uk you might call them thrift shops in the us or wherever you're from you might call them something different so bed and bedding like for example most all of my pillows in fact are entirely cotton casing and they are filled with duck feathers so entirely natural materials right a lot of pillows these days are polyester casing and they are filled with polyester as well. So you're lay laying your head on a, a full plastic fluffy thing, right? Which is not so great for our health because of the reasons that we've mentioned so far, right? Even the duvet itself, I've got a duvet that's made out of cotton and also feathers on the inside. My mattress right now is a synthetic material. I'm trying really hard to find a, a mattress that's affordable, that is something that is made of natural materials. So that is something that I need to do in my life, right? So I haven't figured out 100% of my entire life of this kind of natural materials kind of thing as well. So, but I am on the journey, right? The chair that you sit on, the table that you work with, right? So the chair, I don't have a chair. I, I stand up and I work and I work standing up, right? That's, that's what I do, right? 
The table that I have is uh, like a wood effect kind of plastic. So what I do is I drape a, a large cotton kind of tablecloth over that so it limits my exposure to that kind of plastic stuff because i i do like put my hands on my table i write things down like I, you need contact with your table sometimes right and so that's what i do to kind of mitigate that and looking around me a lot of the stuff that i kind of interact with is plastic right and that's some of it i can't avoid right like my keyboard my mouse they don't make these these kind of uh, devices from you know natural materials like you know metal would be a better material but they don't do that right so some of it's unavoidable and that's that's something that you kind of have to live with at some point but the majority of the changes that we can make really work and really affect our health in in big ways such as our clothing and the things that i've mentioned so don't worry if it's not 100 percent your world is like completely free of these kind of stuff it's okay if we have like little tiny bits like the 0.01 percent if you've done the most of the work then you've done a, a big step there carpet Okay, carpet generally is made out of synthetic polyester material. It's not great for our general well-being. So if you can choose where you live or what flooring you have, avoid carpet. And especially, I don't find carpet very hygienic anyway. It tends to accumulate a lot of dust and it tends to be a very unhygienic way to live anyway. So I don't like it anyway. Thankfully, in my house, we have these kind of like hardwood floors. It's not actual wood, but I'm, I'm guessing it's kind of like a wood effect casing and it's like kind of plastic on there so it's it's not great but it's better than having a carpet and what i use to mitigate that is i have like some rugs that i use like such as this kind of material right like a, a rug that i use i put it on the floor and that is a barrier between my foot on the floor and it's like it's kind of nice anyway to have that especially in the in a cold country like the uk to have something between your feet and the cold floor Right. So rugs are great in that way, especially because they're machine washable as well. You can literally take up what is essentially part of your floor and chuck it in the washing machine to wash. And it comes out completely clean in the end. And that's fine. Right. And these rugs, by the way, 100 percent cotton, if you're wondering. Right. Of course, natural materials is what matters here. Wallpaper as well. Right. So as well as flooring, wallpaper as well. Having some kind of natural material like the wallpaper I have right now is kind of a plasticky material, but... I haven't looked into replacing that because I can't exactly take down the the entire wall space in my, my parents' house and replace it. But I will look into some solutions. Perhaps walls that are made out of like, you know, stone or like cement kind of kind of material, something that is better for us to kind of like contact with and like kind of have less exposure to plasticky materials, right? And pay attention by the way, right? Some of these kind of wood panel if you can afford to change your floor to like wood paneling. Be careful to look out for wood effect, right? Wood effect means that it's it's not wood, but it's it looks like wood, right? So if you can afford to replace your floor, make sure to get actual like real wood if you want wood, right? Or like actual real like marble or like tiled floor instead of like a tile effect floor, right? Which is made out of like plasticky material, right? So make sure you pay attention to that if you're gonna replace it, if you have the money to replace your entire house in that kind of way pay attention to the materials that you actually put on your house, okay? iPhone case, right? Most cases for phones are made out of plastic, right? The phone that I'm recording this on right now, I actually bought and managed to find a silicone case on Amazon, right? I don't know if these, these are super common, but I found one for my, I've got an iPhone 12 Pro, and that is the case that I found. I'm like, I was super happy to find, I was like, finally, I can have a case on my phone that's not plastic, I can reduce my exposure to plastic, by about like a hundred times probably, right? Our phones, things that we use every single day, we bring everywhere with us, we keep in our pockets. It's so amazing to find something that can reduce the amount of plastic that I'm exposed to on my phone. That is stellar, amazing. Might be hard to find with Android phones because the cases are like, you know, Android phones are like shaped differently and like they have a variety of different like shapes and sizes, but iPhones tend to be the same size. And so manufacturers, or put the effort into like putting different materials into their cases and things like that. So that should be easy to find if you have an iPhone. I hope you can find one if you have an Android, but it probably will be harder to find, okay? So going back to clothing, I've got another section here about clothing. Any synthetic material, right? It's probably a type of plastic. So I talked about polyester already. There's another one called polyamide. That's also a plastic. Poly tends to refer to a polymer, which are types of plastic, right? 
So that if you see something like that, it's probably a plastic. Other materials include viscose. So viscose is it's derived from wood, but I, I believe it's a type of plastic made from wood. So I'm not sure about that. Probably best to avoid. In my life, I've avoided that. So up to you to choose what that effect that has on you. I think it, I, I'm pretty sure it still does have the effects that normal plastics do on your body. So probably best to avoid in any case. Probably better for the environment, but I care more about my health than I care about the environment, right? Closer to the body is worse. So the critical kind of element here is probably your underwear, right? Get underwear that is 100% cotton. So I've got some underwear here on the table beside you guys. And that is 100% cotton. I've got the label cut out because labels tend to be made out of polyester as well, which is not great. I don't want that to be exposed to my, my body. So I cut that off. But before I cut it off, I read the label. I'm like, okay, it's at least 95% cotton, right? That's the thing as well, right? The percentages of materials in the, in the clothes that you have, some of it might be a percentage of polyester or a percentage of... So in my underwear, there's like elastane, right? It's a, it's a type of plastic that helps the material to stretch a little bit, right? So my underwear, it's like three, four, five percent elastane, right? And that I can live with, right? If it's at least like 90, 95% cotton, you should be fine. You should be, it's it's leaps and bounds ahead of something that is 100% polyester, for example, 100% plastic, right? That is awful. If you get to 90, 95%, that is a lot better. Don't panic if you can't get 100%. Don't get anxious about it. This is the best we can do sometimes, and that's completely fine. So yes, as I mentioned, underwear is critical. Jackets are most likely okay. Like if you're like wearing a lot of layers and you have a jacket that's like kind of got a plastic outer layer, like a, a raincoat, for example, that should be fine. Like temporarily, you can wear that. Like it's between like the layers of your, your clothing anyway. So it should be fine to use that in those cases. So for the most part, sticks natural materials. I've got on the notes here, 90% absolute minimum, 95% or more is best, right? So that is clothing come to a close. That's the topic of clothing. So today I'm going to stop there. There's one more topic to pursue, but I'm going to make a part four for that because I don't want this to be like a half an hour video and make it incredibly long. The stuff we went through today, the conditions of our testicles, hot balls means very bad for our health, basically, right? The details I went through there, things like sauna, hot bar, things like that. Furniture, tables, chairs, floors, ceiling, walls, everything around us that we can avoid plastic with. Clothing, get natural materials. Natural materials include things like cotton, wool, linen, things like this, and plastic materials, so synthetic materials, include polyester, polyamide, elastane, things like that, things that we want to avoid. The, the kind of key factor here, or the key kind of takeaway here, is try to get like 90%, 95% or more percent of natural materials in the clothing that you wear. So I hope that's helped you out today. Please, please give this video a like if you liked it. And if you want to see more videos just like this, please do subscribe. But most of all, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped. Knowledge is power and the power is yours. I'll see you tomorrow.